Good evening. I'm glad you're here with me tonight, and uh, this is a great topic. I think that, that candida overgrowth is something that is so prevalent because of the amount of antibiotics that are that we take as a population that also is in our food sources. We'll talk about it in a bit. I just think that it's something that can, uh, if we can learn how to treat it, it's just amazing. So this is me. I'm a chiropractic physician. I've been practicing now 22 years here in, in Utah, and I've just, I love practice. I love uh, working with people. So candida is, and, and fungus and mold and so forth is all in the same family. Uh, candida is a, is a fungus that is in a form of yeast, which is small, in small amounts aid in the digestion. However, candida in large amounts becomes an overgrowth that in turn causes a number of ailments, and specifically ailments of the digestive tract, alimentary tract, the vaginal, urinary, anus, basically throughout the whole system of the, of the digestive tract. But the, the sequela or the, the problems that it causes, uh, mycotoxins, for example, can affect even, even transmutate and into other areas of the body. So I think it's just an amazing thing to hit. This is a tremendous picture of what candida can look like. Uh, that, that's just a, a heavy dose of fungus on that gut or on that tongue. So an overgrowth that breaks down the, the intestinal wall and penetrates the bloodstream releasing mycotoxins. This mycotoxin, that's what causes our ADD and ADHD and all those other issues. So mycotoxins are produced by candida, which then um, affect leaky gut, uh, can cause skin and nail issues, eczema, psoriasis, fungal infections on the skin. I find that most psoriasis and eczema um, are affected very much by the treatment of candida. Chronic fatigue, fatigue fibromyalgia, all of these are associating. I think that as far as leaky gut goes, that fungus is one of the major contributors to leaky gut syndrome. Again, digestive issues, autoimmune issues, memory, the memory, the fog, the ADD and ADHD, this is what we mainly see with overgrowth of, of fungus. And that can ultimately uh, disrupt the endocrine system as well. Mood, anxiety, irritability, depression. Um, when we think of candida or, or fungal infections, we always think vaginal. That's what most people, in, in layman terms, oh, you have a yeast infection, oh, it's, it's vaginal. Men have it as much as women. However, women are more um, susceptible to it. It can create severe allergies, um, carbon sugar cravings, and we'll discuss that here as well. So statistics for candida are few. It's most of the medical profession deny that it even exists. They, they don't uh, give it very much um, effect at all. But when we give antibiotics, it will create a die-off of our good bacteria. Without that good bacteria, yeast, which are normal in the gut, will mutate, and we'll see that in a minute, what that mutation looks like. Without, without the good bacteria, the, the yeast will mutate and create pseudopods, which are hunting for food. So if you will, this would represent, this, this application right here would represent a pseudopod. So that is what penetrates down into the digestive tract and now you've, now you've really entrenched it into the system. And that's where we get a lot, of, a lot of the digestive issues. So the known facts, women are more likely than men. I'm not sure exactly why that is, but I see preponderance. And maybe it's just because we, in, in natural medicine, we find that 80% of our patients are women. I'm sure all of you find that same statistic. Um, the 20% that are men are usually here, at least in my office, for pain. And then at, during the examination, we'll find, yeah, your tongue's coated. You've, you, in, in tapping and, and uh, um, palpating the abdomen, we'll find extra air, extra air sounds. Ask them if they have a history of bloating and gas, flatulence, and they say, of course. Fourth most uh, common cause in the bloodstream, uh, as far as infections, blood infections, would be from candida. The data shows dramatic increases of candida infections. It just I think it's the amount of antibiotics that we've we've used in our in our um, normal uh, medical profession and within our food supply. So our antibiotics are a very important issue. I'm not completely against antibiotics. I think they're needed for sure during surgery, um, severe severe infections. But the the run of the mill sore throat and the the sinus uh, congestion that we give antibiotics for that can be handled naturally, and I'm sure most of you already know how, the, how to do that. But uh, Bactoex, for example, or Smart Silver, uh, 
uh, silver applications, vitamin C. There's so many things that we can give besides antibiotics for the, for the overall uh, colds and flu. But because of the medical prescription, the food industries, antibiotics in the dairy, the beef, chicken, I don't know if you've ever been to an egg plant, but they'll have 10 or 15 chickens in one cage defecating on each other, and it's just a sick condition, and their application of antibiotics all the time, well, that's absorbed into their meat, into the eggs, the food, so forth. Um, it basically creates that a super bug, if you will. That's where we're so... Hey, we, don't, we have a, a little frown over here. That's a great, a great picture. Approximately 95% of the patients have candida. That's what I find in my own practice. As I'm looking and I'm checking out their tongue, I see it literally on every patient that I see. So I know that there's some, some concept um, with, the, uh, with the antibiotics and, and how it's throughout our system. I find in the alcoholics that I've treated, 100% of them have an overgrowth. And I think it's just because of the amount of of uh, the alcohol, and that just, again, causes more fermentation, more uh, great ecology in the, in the gut for that application, for that increased um, um, life form. Uh, it makes a great, a great uh, ecology for it. Endometriosis, there's another one that's very big in this concept. And the idea of endometriosis, that candida is a, or endometriosis is a reversal of flow Instead of, instead of the menses passing through, there's a regurgitation of the fallopian tubes out into the abdominal wall. And again, uh, candida is, is a contributing factor to that, to that outward flow. Now, one of the treatments uh, medically for, for fungus is diflucan. Diflucan will kill um, the main body. So here, this would be the representation of the main body of the fungus. Here are the pseudopods. Usually, yeast is normal in the gut. It's, it's a normal amount. But when, when the good bacteria is killed by the antibiotic, yeast has, has been, to this point, being fed by the good bacteria in the form of vitamin B. The yeast desire vitamin B. And they're, they're just happy, and they're going along fine. But when the good bacteria is killed, that fungus now will create the pseudopods. It will mutate into fungus. These are what, ap what ap um, uh, dig down into the, into the wall of the, of the digestive tract. So with diflucan, it will kill this, this main part. But these pseudopods that have penetrated down into the colon, these aren't killed. So I find that sometimes if we could hit it with a dose of diflucan to kill the major part and then follow through or con concurrently treat with fungex, that the major part would die off, the main, the main body, the main globule would die off, and then over time, using fungex, the pseudopods are, are rendered so that they cannot have, um, they can't create more yeast. So that's a very important aspect, to be able to kill it by old age, and that's what fungex has the ability to do. So we'll discuss fungex here in just a minute, and that's the Innovita's product that works so well at knocking off uh, the candida. Now, I absolutely love this next slide. Absolutely love it. This is, this is exactly what fungus and candida create, is that food craving. So candida presents, or candida patients will often crave sugars. Will often, we, I, which I, I should have put here, always crave sugar. Um, once, this, once it starts, the fermentation then leads to mycotoxins. Those mycotoxins are what control one's behavior. So we'll start to get the doc, Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde concept, if you will, here, because when the, when the patient hasn't had sugar or carbs, when, when their blood sugar becomes low, they will turn into another person that you don't even recognize as they're looking for sugar again. And as that sugar, um, they, are, they almost calm down once they get the sugar. Sometimes they'll speed up, uh, um, have more for a bit, as far as more focus and more concentration. However, in children, um, we find that uh, many times they go to school and they, they can't focus, and that's the ADD and ADHD. So we send them, we send them down for, for, for their breakfast. We give them cocoa pebbles and, and frosted flakes and send them out, and by 10 o'clock or 9 o'clock, they're just hyper as heck. So now we want to give them uh, the, the psychotics and the, I um, um, can't remember the name of the one that we give them all the time, but that it basically makes them be a zombie. 
we can get control of this fungus and, and the candida, and I'm just basically causing, calling it fungus. That includes mold and yeast and everything. So uh, the mycotoxins as well create further cravings. Again, cakes, cookies, candies, pasta, bread. That's what, that's what the fungus desires. And it will create um, that, that uh, desire for the patient to eat more. And then again, this creates the symptoms of bloating and bowel discomfort, ADD and ADHD. And the, some of the signs are you can smell it on their breath. It's a sweet smell. It's almost like a foot odor in their breath. It's a sweet, that sweet fermented kind of fight uh, issue. So fighting candida, candida can be difficult and lengthy to treat. Common, uh, common sense changes will help. Getting in and knocking out the stuff that we know, the cakes, cookies, candies, pasta, bread. And work with these things that are antifungal. Killing, you know, onions, garlic, uh, coconut oil kale, mustard greens, celery, collards, uh, parsley, arugula, broccoli, Swiss chard, and Brussels sprouts. These all have the ability to knock down fungus. So exercise increases oxygen, which helps fight the spores. They don't like oxygen. They're an anaerobic uh, in nature. Increased iron goes a long way with more oxygen in the blood. So making sure the patient's not uh, an iron deficient. Of avoid food allergies, which will make the matters worse. So sometimes we have allergens um, that we will crave, but still be allergic to that food. Avoid, ac avoid acidic foods, because um, acidity is where they grow. We want to have more alkaline, um, alkaline. And one of the things you can do is drink spearmint tea as well. The essential fats, omega-3 and omega-6, help to strengthen the bowel wall. Vitamins and minerals, of course, we need to have that to make strong bowel wall again. Good probiotics, which we'll discuss here in a minute. Innovita has created some two major effective probiotics, especially following antibiotics. And this is one thing I wish that our medical brothers would do, would be if you're going to give antibiotics, follow through for sure. Not just with, not just with yogurt or something that, uh, there's a yogurt that's out there that everybody wants, Activa. Well, that's got a little bit of, of, of uh, good bacteria. But when we're talking about trillions, there's just not enough in yogurt. And again, the spearmint tea three times daily. You had forgotten that it was written there. And then again, that helps to alkalize the bowel. All right, so the antifungal diet, basically eating vegetables, staying away as much as you can for the first while with fruit. So diminish or completely eliminate cakes, cookies, candies, pasta, bread, and other simple carbohydrates. So you want to try to eat as complex carbohydrate as you can. So I suggest 50% of the diet should be vegetables, raw where possible. Some cooked, um, I just finished up my acupuncture, and the Chinese basically don't eat uh, raw. They usually will ferment it or lightly steam it. So however works best for you, I tell the patient, you know, if you like salads, that's great, but we also want to cook some as well. So if raw is not possible, then lightly steam them. Normally suggest 20% fruit, but eliminate fruit for, the, for a short time as we're knocking it down as much as everything we can do to, to knock it down in the beginning. So many are concerned about eating bread because of the yeast. So this is a misnomer. It's not the yeast in the bread. It's that the, it's that the bread actually turns back into dough. So at 350 degrees when we're cooking our bread, that yeast is killed. But it's in the digestive tract that returns back to dough, which then feeds the yeast. So that's why we suggest not working, uh, not using as much, uh, even, even whole wheat bread. Now I've discussed the fungex. This is the number one uh, antifungal. It removes spores. It removes spores organisms in the system. So it's our herbal support. It changes the ecology of the gut as well, and it makes it so that 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 um, fungus cannot replicate itself. These are the support formulas that we work with as well when we're working in in, in candida. Generally speaking, it is going to be in the colon. So. Um, we work with the calcium, that's a effective to help alkalize the system. The fungex, we work to knock out and make it so that it can't replicate itself. It dies of old age rather than uh, killing it directly like, like the uh, diflucan. The coltrax is supporting the colon, helping it to become stronger, bringing the villi back on, on board, supporting the villi growth. Leptera, this is a tremendous uh, support for digestion. It's a um, low glycemic, it's for diabetics, it has acidophilus, digestive enzymes, um, 
basically everything that you need for a meal replacement made of uh, instantized rice protein. And then as the fungus dies, the mycotoxins can be diminished by eating or taking the Toxex. So the Toxex is um, it, it's a chelating agent. So remember in previous seminars, we've talked about the chelation of bringing small molecules to become larger molecules. That's what the Toxex does. So these are, this is our, our basic uh, treatment, except in the next couple of slides, I'll show you more of the, um, of the uh, reestablishing the good bacteria as well. So uh, normal treatment, and again, I always suggest that you work with checking the kinesiologically how much the patient needs. Don't just go, okay, one, one capsule four times a day. Always check using kinesiology. Um, if you're concerned or afraid of it, or you don't know enough about it, talk to Innovita and they'll give you um, our seminar on how to, how to use kinesiology. But Fungex, one four times a day. The Toxex, one four times a day. And whenever I'm working on a layer of infection, I will use Toxex. And I basically use as much Toxex as the or as the infection fighters that I'm using. So if I'm using Bactolex or Virox or MetaX, Microsite, Paramac, all of these are the infection fighters, I would use one capsule per, uh, per infection fighter. Um, MetaX, now this is another very important one. We find that fungus and metals will combine together. That in this case, the fungex or the fungus will actually wrap around metal. So if we have heavy metals, then to protect the body, the fungus will actually try to protect the host. It has an intelligence to it. So it'll wrap around the metal, the heavy metals, and make it so that um, the effect isn't as much on the tissues. So it's going to wrap around that. So many times I'll use Fungex and MetaX conjointly at the same time. That way we're getting rid of and chelating the metal out so that the fungus now is, it no longer has the need to wrap around the metal. So that's again one four times a day. The digestive, and this supports the digestive tract, the digestive enzymes, specifically protease, lipase, amylase. This will also knock off and help digest the biofilm. Biofilm is like a mucousy substance that's in the digestive tract that will cover over and, and kind of hide the, the, the fungus as well. So the digestive helps to break down the walls of that um, of the biofilm. So that's very good there. Now <clears throat> I've talked about fluorescin and vibroprofen in previous seminars, but this is where it really shines is when, when you're working with fungus. So there's two different applications of the good bacteria. Vibroprofen works with as an anti-inflammatory, specifically in the digestive tract. It's, it shuts down inflammation, and that's where leaky gut syndrome is, is uh, really affected by the inflammation, or that's, what, that's uh, uh, chicken or the egg, which one comes first, the gut being leaky or the infl inflammatory state. But with vibroprofen, we can shut down the inflammation while we're replicating or putting in good bacteria. Now, this good bacteria has the ability to create more um, um, colonies as well. So this is vibroprofen. Fluorescin is straight good bacteria, and it's, and it's put in, um, the, the application is that it can make it through the stomach and the, and the acidity of the stomach and actually break apart and, uh, and be absorbed into the small and large intestine in an, in an alkaline state where once the, once the chyme or the stomach contents has come through and into the small intestine, it's worked upon and become and, and is created and, and it's changed from acidic to an alkaline environment. That's where we want the fluorescin or the good bacteria to break apart so it's not killed within the um, acidity of the stomach. So this has been created for that. So what I'll usually do is do checking again, which is where, I, where the application is. Do I do vibroprofen in the morning or in the evening? But I'll usually do one or two capsules of vibroprofen, let's say in the morning, and two fluorescin in the evening. And that way I'm getting the high doses, plus I'm also getting the anti-inflammatory aspect of that. So that's a great, super one-two punch. Um, I've looked for this for a long time, that ability to shut down the inflammation. And Dr. Kim just hit a home run here with uh, creating these two products. Now, other 
Uh, so we just talked about that specifically, and then the and then the coal tracks. We've already discussed that as well. So I think that you know when you use these two together, you're really or these three together, you're really um, supporting that and just making it completely rebuilt and 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 moved so that you can um, have a good strong colon. Now the thing that you might want to consider though is several weeks prior to fighting the fungus to heal the digestive tract. You want to you want to sometimes get in and use the cold tracks first before we get in and give the fungex. Because if you have leaky gut syndrome and you get in and start to kill the fungus, it's going to leak those toxins, the die off of the fungus back through the colon, and now you're having more Hersheimer's reaction. Hersheimer's reaction of course is die off. So that's a, a big thing that we need to think about. So again, ask through kinesiology, how, is it time? Can I work with this layer of infection? And I also, as I'm working with layers of infection in the gut, always ask, is it appropriate to fight this first or do I need to support the colon and digestive tract before we kill the, the infection? So make sure you're considering that as well. If we can get on top of fungus with our patients, they really make a, a, a tremendous breakthrough. So I think the biggest gooey uh, uh, sludginess of the colon and digestive tract is from the fungus. Once that's clear, we've got a good count of bacteria, we've got a good strong, um, um, the, the tissues are strong, the cells have come together, there's no more leak, we've got good digestive enzymes in our, in our process, we've changed their diet, now we're talking about true health. 